WebAssembly will enable us to do something we have been working on solving for, for the past decade. You know, the web has always been a convenient and secure way for users to access content. If you want to run any code in a web browser, it's, it's got to be JavaScript. Which has a nice uh, language, but is far below native levels of performance. JavaScript has gotten far, far faster than it used to be five or ten years ago. And even in the last few years, it's gotten even faster with things like SMJS, which really allowed us to already run large applications like game engines. But still, there's just a few areas where JavaScript and SMJS can't give us the full speed that you can get in a native application. And you need to really design the executable format kind of from scratch in a proper way, and that's what WebAssembly is. One of the big differences between WebAssembly and JavaScript is that it, JavaScript was first and foremost a language that was built for humans to write and uh, read, and eventually browsers got very fast at executing that code. WebAssembly, on the other hand, is designed first and foremost as a compiler target, so it's built for what compilers want to emit and what is efficient for browsers to execute. But in general, you will just take a language like C++ or Rust and compile the code down to WebAssembly. For SMJS and WebAssembly to work properly, there are two parts. One is a tool chain that compiles the C++ or Rust or other language into the compiled code. And then we need to be able to run the compiled code in the browser. So when you use a compiler like LLVM, which is what we use sort of to start the compilation process, the output that it gives you is basic blocks and branches, but you're compiling to JavaScript, which is a structured language. So you have ifs and whiles and, and uh, do while loops. So you have these high level control flow structures that are very different than what a compiler gives you. Early approaches to, to this basically just sort of emulated the control flow by generating something as similar as possible to those basic blocks and branches, just using a switch and a loop. And that works, but it's quite slow. And I came up with, with the way that basically recreates a similar control flow structure that you had in the original code that you compiled. So it looks at the basic blocks, and it finds where there is really a loop, where there's an if, and it then creates those ifs and those loops. Often this would make you three, four times faster than the older approaches. What WebAssembly does is it gives you a way to emit code that is smaller over the wire when you're sending it to the, uh, to the web browser and allows the web browser to really efficiently pull it into memory and prepare it to, for execution, and then when it runs it, to very quickly uh, run at high performance. Obviously, JavaScript is essential. It's critical to the web. It's not going anywhere, but we're empowering a whole new slew of audience. I started to work on this area at around 2010, just kind of as a hobby. I was curious to see what we could run on the web in terms of code that we compile from a language like C++. I basically started an experiment in my own spare time to see how this can work, and that eventually turned into the mscripten project. I remember the first time I actually met Alone was on a plane, and he learned that I was on the JavaScript engine, and, and he said, hey, I, I have this project, mscripten, it's built on LVM, it compiles C++ to JavaScript. And my very first impression was, was wow, that sounds slow. Like, that'll, that'll run way worse than if I just wrote the code by hand because because of course you have to write it by hand. It was quite slow. It generated code that ran maybe five, ten times slower than native. That's when Martin Best joined us. I thought Martin's great, great tactic was, uh, I'm not going to complain directly to you about all these things. I'm just going to pull in all the real users and all the real engineers and put them together in a room for three days. And then after that, all the, pro you know, all the, the what should be done kind of falls out from like, well, let's look at their problems. We started getting these funny test cases that would be submitted to us that were megabytes large from alone, saying, hey, I compiled. And what sounded at the, at the time like ridiculous things, like, hey, I compiled SQLite, oh, and, and it crashes. And we're like, well, why would you want to compile SQLite? And why is this thing so huge? Who would ever want to do this? Because we didn't yet see the, the grand glory. But we started to work more and more with mscripten and just get a feel for what, what sort of project was this? What sort of JavaScript did it emit? Luke was the person who formalized uh, on the, the ASM.js type structure. And he, he did a really good job of recognizing that this could actually be done, that you, you could take the existing language and, and embed within it a, a, a type system for running uh, low-level code with, with high efficiency. When I write this little bit of C, what does that produce? And when I would look at it, 
I, the realization all of a sudden set in is, this is great for the JIT. This is good code that we can optimize well, but it's nothing I would want to write by hand. If I wrote this by hand, I would use objects and they'd have to get garbage collected and using properties, but it's just taking all the memory and putting it into one giant typed array. And that's, that's really efficient to index and it's really efficient to get stuff out of it. So this is actually um, good code. We should, we, should, uh, we should optimize this type of code. And that really led to SMJS, which was kind of to formalize those concepts in a way that really gives you as good a guarantee as you can get in JavaScript. And at this point, we were seeing that game engines just run pretty well. That is, you're often more bound by the speed of WebGL or Web Audio or some other feature of the web platform than native code execution. So then we went out to uh, visit some game companies who, who treated us incredibly well, and, and they challenged us with, could you port our stuff? One thing that's really helped us in this space is Yuka, who's just great at diving into their code bases and finding out the issues, debugging corner cases. So he's just worked with them and fixed issue after issue. And Yuka was our troubleshooter. We kept testing it out and looking for you know, uh, critical flaws in the technology that would stop it from really being able to deliver on this universal, you know, dream of a VM. I'm, people have tried to do this before and it's been very challenging. But we just kept attempting to give it harder and harder tests and it kept passing. The challenge, of course, even from having something that works is then having it distribute to all the browsers. And I have to say it's been a remarkable diplomatic effort between the groups and, uh, you know, the other browsers to come together and really make this thing happen. You know, this entire train of development that began with asm.js and now uh, has led to WebAssembly is, to me, the ultimate culmination of web development capabilities. It's a new step in accessibility. It's beyond anything achieved previously. Being able to have your native application directly running on the web, it, it feels it feels like you're, you're running something that doesn't really, like, that, that shouldn't exist. And, and uh, but, but it does, and, and you're able to do all the same things that you were able to do in your native application, and that's just phenomenal. Mm -hmm.